Hi, my name is Colleen Isabel Centeno from BSN 2A and today I will demonstrate the general assessment to a client. So, what is general assessment? General assessment will provide us an information about the client's characteristics of illness, client's hygiene, client's body gait, height, weight, emotional state, and developmental status. It also gives us an overview, review, or first impression to the client's well-being. For the materials needed, we need the height chart, the ring scale, and the notepad and pen. So, for the assessment, we need first to identify the client. So, Mom, are you Hannah J. D. Centeno? Yes. So, in identifying the client, it avoid uh, medical errors and also confirm if the procedure we will do is appropriate to the client. Um, next one, we need to explain the procedure to the client and describe how can she cooperate for us. So, mom, um, today I will do the general assessment. All you need to do is to answer the question honestly and to do what will I say. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. In explaining the procedure, um, we can lessen the anxiety of the patient and gain the cooperation of the patient. Um, next one for planning, we need to perform the hand hygiene first. So we can wash our hands um, to avoid the transmission of microorganisms that causes the illness or diseases. Next one, we need to provide the privacy. We can provide the privacy for a client by closing the doors or closing the curtains of the windows. So with that, we can show that we respect the client and also avoid the client from destruction from external noises or environment. So next, we need to position the client comfortably in either supine or sitting position so that we can access the body that we will need to access. So next one for the implementation, um, we need first to assess the level of consciousness of the patient. So we can observe if the patient is awake or interactive to us or lethargic or feeling sleepy or drowsy or feeling of stupor or in deep sleep or if the patient is in coma or unconscious. So my patient is awake. So she is in normal state. So next one, we need to assess the client orientation. So in assessing the client orientation, we can ask some questions like this one. So mom, what is your name? Hello, Jason. So where, where are we now, mom? At home. So um, do you know what is the time and day to day? What is the day to day, mom? Um, November 11. So what is the time? Um, three o'clock. Okay. So, in answering the questions, we can say that the client has a proper orientation. Now, so next one, we will need to assess the language and communication of the patient. First, we need to assess if the patient has an appropriateness in responses of our questions. So, since the patient answered our questions effectively and uses the native language efficiently, we can say that the patient is normal. So next one, we can describe the quality of speech of the client. So since, so in observing the client, she is not slow talker, she is not just fast talker, she is just in normal pace in talking. So, so the client is in normal in describing the quality of speech. Next one, we need to listen for the relevance and organization of thoughts of the client. So, we can ask questions, what happened yesterday or today? So, mom, um, what happened? What do you keep busy yesterday? Um, cleaning the house. Okay, cleaning the house. Um, How about today? Before you go to, to me, what did you keep busy? Um, nothing. Nothing. So, if maybe the patient um, take a rest before um, taking the general assessment. So, next one, we will now observe for any physical deformities or obvious signs of illnesses or diseases. So, by observing the physical characteristics of the client, by observing the skin color, the um, if there are some lesions, 
So, I don't see any abnormalities to a client. So, I can say that the client has a normal health. So, next one, we will, deter we will assessing the client's behavioral status. So, in assessing the client's behavioral status, we need to describe the client's mood. If it is effective, more effective if we will sit beside the client. So, so we can um, easily determine if the client is happy or sad. So, I can ask questions. Mom, are you okay now? Yes. So, if the client um, smiles, it indicates as she is happy. If the client, you see if she is crying or frowns, is she, it means that she is in pain or being frustrated. So, we can also see if the client is interested on us by looking on her eyes directly. So, next one, we will assess the client's attitude. In assessing the client's attitude, um, from the first of the start of our assessment, I can say that the client is calm and very cooperative and it is normal. So, if the patient is, we see, observe that if she, if he or she is not interested or doing something while we were, we were doing the assessment or looking everywhere around the room, we can say that the client is um, anxious or not interested in our assessment. So next one, we will now um, describe the client's overall hygiene and grooming. So by looking at the clothes of the clients, it is appropriate to her age by looking. So mom, I can check her nails. So it is clean. The other one mom. So it is the client has a clean nails. So about the hair. So you can check the hair. So it is smooth and there is no there's no lie. So the the hair grooming and hygiene is correct and we can also smell if the client has a bad odor so i didn't smell anything bad odor coming from our client so i can say that the client has appropriate hygiene and grooming so next one we will describe the physical appearance of the client for describing the physical of the client um mom can i ask you to stand so in standing i can say that the client is tall tall enough so her height is appropriate to her age so she ha she is not too fat she is not too thin so just her body is just correctly fine or proportional to her height um we can say that the the face of the patient has a round shape so we can so that is the physical appearance so next one we will now describe the body build of the patient so in looking at the body build of the patient I can say that the patient has a mesomorph. So she is not too thin, she is not too fat, she is not endomorph, which is too fat, which she is not an ectomorph, or she is not too thin, so she is a mesomorph, which is a normal one. So next one we will now measure the height of the client. So in measuring the height, we will know if the height of the patient is appropriate to her age. So mom, can I ask you to go here? Here and put down your slippers and then face the wall and so just look straight mom okay so okay mom you can you can move so using my alternative height chart I measure the client's height at 164 centimeters so if we convert it to the meters i can say that the patient has a 1.64 meters so next one we will proceed now in measuring the weight of the patient why we need to measure the weight of the patient it is because we will know if the weight of the patient is appropriate or high so mom um you can walk. So, so the patient is in 59 kilograms. So thank you, mom. You can go back to your seat.
So after getting the height and the weight of the patient, we can now solve the BMI, the, the BMI or the body mass index of the patient. So by so the kilogram to patient is fifty nine. So we can divide it by the one point sixty four centimeters squared. We can get um the 29.93 so of the BMI so we in determining the BMI so the normal range is between 19.1 to 25.8 in women so we can say that the patient has a normal BMI so why we need to determine the BMI of the patient so that we can determine the health risk if it is outside the normal range for example if we measure that the BMI is overweight. Um, we can say that the patient ha has a higher risk in diabetes or any heart diseases. So, last one, we will now describe the posture and gait of the patient. So, in describing the posture and gait of the patient, it is very important because in treating a musculoskeletal pain. So, we can ask the client, mom, you can... You can stand, can you stand? So, so the posture of the patient is normal. She is not, um, she is not that slouch. So she is not also experiencing, um, scoliosis. So it is just normal. So we can also ask the patient to to widen her legs. So ayan, and then, so it's normal. So next one, we can ask the patient to walk. So observe the walk if it is in normal. So mom, and then mom, can you see it? So in walking and sitting of the patient, we can we observe that the patient has normal posture in walking and also in sitting. So for the evaluation, we need to evaluate if the findings of the physical assessment is within the normal range. Why? Um, why it is very important so that it is important to determine if there is something needed by medical attentions. So, by assessing if the client's um, assessment to the, her body is within normal range, we can say that the clients don't need any physical attention. If we observe that the client have some abnormality, so we can... Um, attach some medical attention to the client to correct it so for the documentation we need to document and report any significant findings why for example if the patient undergoing in our intervention in nursing care plan um, we can say that the patient has an improvement or not so if the patient has in an improvement we can say that our intervention is Correct or so if it is not or um, we need to modify our interventions in our nursing care plan so for that um, that's all um, for general assessments um, again my name is Pauline Sebele Centeno thank you for